They are in the business of paying you out as least amount as possible. Give them a reason and they will pay you less. Bear gang till I die. Ho. Swooped up the homies and we about to start a side show. Need to knows about fire insurance. Okay. All right. Number one. Okay, guys. The best thing you can do for yourself, okay? And this is for people in the West Coast especially because you might be dealing with this. The best thing, the number one thing you can do, and you can do it today, right this minute, is video everything. Okay, what do I mean by video everything, okay? Get your iPhone or your Samsung, or your camera, and walk through your house from the front door to the back door, every single nook and cranny of your house, open every single cabinet, every single thing you have, and make one long video. So you have proof of everything in your house. Okay? Why is that important? Because insurance companies are not your friends, okay, they do not, they want to pay you the least amount possible, all right, and if you don't have proof that you had something, it was, it disintegrates or is burned up in a fire and you didn't keep receipts, how do you prove that you had it, okay, they are going to nickel and dime you out of every single thing they can, and if you don't have proof of your clock that you bought from Nordstrom for $95 because it's made out of wood, you can claim it. Maybe you get it, but guess what? You're going to say clock. Yep, clock. And they are going to say, what type of clock? And you're going to say it was a wooden clock. And they'd be like, do you have any specifics? Well, no, it was a nice wooden clock. Do you have a receipt? No. And they're going to find the cheapest wooden clock they can from Walmart for $5. They replaced it. It was a wooden clock. You say it's worth $95, but you have no proof. But if you videotape the entire house, you can show them exactly what clock it was. You can go on to Nordstrom website, find the exact clock and say, see, that's the one. The same thing with everything else in your house. If you say, oh, I had a TV. What type of TV? It was a Samsung. How much did it cost? $2,000. It was a 65-inch. They're going to go to Walmart. They're going to find a 65-inch uh, 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 Samsung, and they're going to get it. It's going to be $699, and you just lost $1,500. So just videotape everything. Take your phone out and videotape your entire house. Look at every single thing you have, okay? Go in your closets, show your shoes, everything you have. That way you have a backup, okay? Hopefully you don't need it, but you have a backup. That's number one, okay? Have a video record of everything in your house. It will save your ass, okay? Number two, document everything, okay? What I mean by that is that you may think that, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, um, document all the spices I have in my spice cabinet. Cause who cares? They're only a few bucks a piece. Let's be real. Every time you go to the grocery store and you buy spices, you buy $10 worth of spices. Okay. And they sit in your drawers and they go to, now this may not sound like a lot. I'm just talking, I'm going to build up to this, but your spice drawer right now might have a hundred bucks in spices in it. Okay, but what else do you have? All your oils, all your baking stuff, all of that stuff, okay? Perishable or not perishable adds up, maybe $400, okay? Then you have appliances. Look in your bathroom. Do you know how many of you guys have gone to Bed Bath & Beyond or have gone on to Amazon and you probably have $200 worth of stuff in your bathroom, okay? You might have $200 worth of stuff in your bathroom, your sponges, your... You know, your, your, I mean, obviously it's, it, it, it seems like it's a very taxing thing and that's what the video will help you with, but you can also document things. Like for example, let's say you don't video everything in there. You can document. This is why the first one is so important is videotaping everything because then you can just bring it up from the video and be like, see, there's that, 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 that. If you're not going to videotape it or there's things that you need to prove otherwise, you can document it ahead of time, especially for expensive stuff. But that's what the videotape is so important for. You can literally go back to the video 
tape afterwards, so you don't have to do it now, but you can go afterwards and, and, and look in your bathroom and next to your sink, okay, all right, you might have, you know, your your razor, you know, that might be 40 bucks and your cologne might be 100 bucks and your, and your hair gel might be 15 bucks. You might have $400 worth of stuff. It doesn't seem like it because you didn't buy it all at once, but you might have all that stuff right there. Okay, you'd be very, very, very surprised how much money you have throughout your house, because if you don't have proof of it, they ain't going to pay you. And if they do pay you, they're going to find the cheapest version they can. Okay, why is that? Because there is a little hidden clause in most insurances that says, okay, like and kind. Okay, what does like and kind mean? It means they must replace it with something that is like it or of the same kind. That's very broad. That gives the insurance companies a lot of leeway. Once again, TV. You might have a $6,000 TV. But if you don't have a receipt, because who keeps receipts of everything? Nobody does. But if you have a $6,000 TV and it's burned down and you say to them, oh, I had a $6,000 TV. Okay, what type of TV was it? It was a 75-inch Samsung LG 4K Ultra High Def. I don't know. Just something crazy. Well, first of all, you got to prove it. And if they do, they can find a like and kind that's four years old. Why? Because if it's, as long as it's 75 inches, it's a Samsung, and it has this, it doesn't have to be today. It could be a model from, from four years ago that's only worth 800 bucks now. And you just lost $5,200 because it's like and kind. Now, that's the important thing, like and kind. They will get you on that. But if you document it and you videotape it, you can see the exact model and you can show them the model you lost online because, hey, I have it on video. This is the inside of my house. All right. Next thing, understand the difference between a partial loss and a total loss. Think about this like a car accident, okay? What is the difference between um, an accident and totaling, right? In an accident, your insurance will pay you for the damages and the repair. A total means they must replace it, right? They will replace the vehicle. Back to the whole like and kind, okay? So is there fire damage to your house or is it a total loss? Big difference in the type of payout and the benefits you can get. Obviously, everyone's policy is different. This is not a blanket statement. Look at the fine print, understand your policy, okay? But there is a big difference between a partial loss and a total loss. If if your entire house is burned to the ground, okay, that is a total loss. If, okay, a wall or a bedroom is, is burned out or smoke damage, that's considered a partial loss, okay? And they pay out differently. Understand the difference between an, a, 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 a partial loss and a total loss, okay? Big difference in the payouts and obviously... A lot of things change because what they will do for this versus the other is big difference in money and difference in um in uh in what they will do uh out otherwise. Um big time difference, yes. Okay. Next thing to know. File your claim ASAP. Okay, even if it's just the initial claim, file ASAP. And the reason that's so important is you have tens to potentially have hundreds of thousands of people right now that are going to be dealing with it the same. And the longer it takes you to get in, the longer it will take it to process, the further in line you get. Generally, okay, it will be 90 to 120 days until the process can either start or gets going or can be finished. It can be a while, okay? It can be a while and the sooner you claim you file your claim you don't have to have all your evidence you just have to start the filing process do it asap it you might want to wait until you've documented everything or talked 
you can do that throughout the process because it's not a final process, but you need to start the filing very, very early, okay? All right, very, very early. I know that you guys are, are shit posting in chat right now and you guys are tired of this, uh, but I, I'm gonna keep doing it because I know it's gonna help some people. All right, so very important. Get that filing done very early, okay? Now, this is the difference. This is a big one for some of you guys right here. Living expenses. Your, your insurance policy might say they will pay for living expenses, but that does not count as your total living expenses. Count up what your living expenses are now. Let's say your living expenses are $4,000 per month, okay? That is not what they are going to cover, okay? That is not what they are going to cover. They are going to cover whatever outside of your normal living expenses you have to pay to go out now, whether you stay in a motel, okay, eating out at restaurants because you can't cook at home, okay, um, new clothes you have to do while you're waiting for the house to be fixed or rebuilt. That is your living expenses. So if you normally spend $4,000 living expenses and now this is costing you $2,000, that is what they will pay for. They're not going to pay you for the 4,000 living expenses you had before. They will pay you what you have to, your, pay, your, your living expenses are outside of what your normal living expenses are. What the fire has caused you to have to pay. They're not going to pay you 6 k okay? They're going to pay you the living expenses outside of your normal living expenses, okay? No, don't eat, don't eat at steakhouses every day, okay? That is not what I'm getting at, all right? Living expenses. Understand what your living expenses are and what they what 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 the the overage is and what they will pay. Okay, I'm gonna push through this because I don't want to take all day on this. But these are a couple a couple things, guys. Push your insurance company. Okay, push your insurance company. Do not tell them two times. Don't lie to your insurance company. Do not lie. Okay. Do not try to get cute with them because if they find out that you lied about one small thing, they will negate the entire policy and pay you absolute minimum. You may try to get $40 extra out of them by lying about something and it could cost you ten to $20,000. All right, do not lie them do, or lie to them. Don't do it. They will find any reason they can. Remember, they are in the business of paying you out as least amount as possible. Give them a reason and they will pay you less. All right, a couple other things. Understand the difference between fire damage and smoke damage, okay? A lot of people get paid out for fire damage if it's a partial loss, but don't ever claim smoke damage until it's too late. You can claim smoke damage. What do we know about smoke? It rises, okay? You may get the insurance adjuster to come out and check out your house and they only you only show them everything that burnt and, they, and you're done. Then six months later, you go in the attic and notice that it is fucked or the vents in your homes are screwed or your AC is messed up or there is smoke damage all in the ceiling, okay? Or behind walls. Understand that smoke damage fa fa falls under most fire insurance policies, okay? That's not how it works at all. You're so wrong. Okay. You're screaming at me, Narius. So please correct me so I can put the correct thing because I didn't know you were an insurance adjuster. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not an insurance adjuster. I'm just telling you stuff that I know about this. Once again, everyone's policy is different. Everyone's policy is different. I didn't say they were going to skip it. It depends on the type of adjuster you have. And remember, I'm just giving a general basic overview of things to look for. Obviously, everyone's policy is different. Every state is different. Okay? All right, let me move on to a couple other things because these guys want me to stop, but I want to keep going just because just because I want I want uh, I want a couple other things in here. These are just general basics, okay? Everybody's is going to be different. Um your payment that you get out is not final. That is important to understand. Okay, you can always reopen another claim. Okay, so if you feel like you didn't get the, the total amount that you, you wanted from the payout or you don't think it's fair or you find other damage later on or there's other claims to be there or let's say, let's say you find receipts later on or you find pictures later on, you can always reopen another claim. Okay, your claim is not final just because you, uh, you, 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 you got the payout from the, from, from the insurance company. Okay, um... Also, a couple other things, guys, an ale check. 
All right, this is your additional living expenses. These are not your home repairs, okay? This is payout they give you for living expenses while your home is getting fixed, rebuilt, or, or the claim is going on. This is not the same as home repairs, okay? Home repairs are one payout. This is separately, okay? That means a lot. That means, A, don't use one for the other, number one. And number two, you are entitled to both depending on your Depending on your insurance um, 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 contract or the insurance that you have, okay, before anybody else screams at me, Jesus Christ. Thing. The most important other thing that I will tell you guys that I do know, that I do know, and anybody can tell me I'm wrong, but I'm going to tell you this right now. This is very important, okay? Actually, I need to get this this through because this is, this is very, um, uh, uh, this is very, very important, okay? That back to the ale check, which is the assisted livings, are not for repairs. Okay, um, you can ask for kit. You can ask for cash on what you don't want replaced. And the reason that's important, okay, is obviously up to your employer or not employer, but up to your insurance policy. But you may claim your entire wardrobe, okay, your entire wardrobe. But understand something that getting a cash equivalent to a lot of it might actually be beneficial because some of this shit you're you're not going to want to wear anyways or is outdated or you're going to give to goodwill. You may have 20% of your wardrobe, okay, that you don't wear anymore and if you ask for replacements on it, you're just going to have extra clothes that you may never wear. You can ask for cash replacements sometimes depending on your policy. Some policies allow it. Um and whatnot, but you must use that money to replace, okay, the items. Don't get that cash and go blow it on a vacation. They will come after your ass for fraud. If you get a cash payout for items that you don't want directly replaced, you must use that cash to replace it yourselves instead of the uh, instead of allowing the uh, the insurance company to do it. Okay, very important to understand that replacement cost versus cash value. Okay, and the reason that that's important, and I'll give you this little secret right here. Okay, I'll give you this little secret here. Sometimes, instead of cash value for your house, it's actually beneficial to have your home rebuilt. Okay? And the reason is, is because the value of your home may be much less than how much it costs to rebuild it. Okay, because the tile in your home might be outdated, the roofing might need replaced, the drywall might have some problems. Yeah, they'll give you cash value. But then rebuilding it from scratch, you're talking new pipes, you're talking new frames, you're talking new... It, 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 it could literally, literally be significantly more and better for you to have it rebuilt than to have the cash. All right? That's something a lot of people don't realize. Like, oh, fuck, I'll get the cash value for my house. Okay, but having them rebuild your house at like and kind, okay, they replacing everything. And it might bring more value to your home because you stay in the same home or the same area, okay? You have all new stuff, which gives it a whole new life, especially if your home is over 10 years old, all right? Obviously, everybody's situation is different, but that's very important to understand, okay? Um, it, 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 they have to restore your property to its pre loss condition, uniform and consistent in appearance. And that means even if they have to replace undamaged items, okay, like roof tiles and carpeting and everything, even if it wasn't damaged, they have to replace it to be consistent, uh, uniform and consistent in appearance. All right. And the last thing I want to go over because this is causing a lot of problems in chat is understand the difference between a public adjuster and a fire claims adjuster. Okay. And most insurance companies will tell you to not hire one because you're going to pay money out of pocket. But these people are professionals. Okay. Some of them are, are, are fire truck chasing adjusters and they're, and they're, it's kind of like, you know, it, it seems like they're predatory. And yeah, they're going to take a cut of it. But depending on the adjuster, some of them can make your return or your claim up a, a significant higher because they know what to write how to how to squeeze the dimes out because their job is to make as much money for you as possible because they get a cut of it all right so understand the difference between 
um, a public uh, adjuster, a fire claim adjuster, and I'm not telling you to hire one, but the insurance company is going to tell you you don't need one for a reason because they know that you don't have experience writing things creatively to a point where they have to pay it back. There was a story I read on Reddit of a guy who had a projector, okay, that probably was old and probably cost $5, okay? But because he knew the loopholes, he asked for one, this old projector, something that was like and kind, Okay, they had to go out and find one. And because they couldn't find one exactly the same, they had to go on like and kind. And guess what? Because the lenses and the way it is and the newer models, they had to pay out $65,000 for a new one. Because he knew the loopholes in the policy understood like, kind, uniform, and consistent, and knew what he was doing. All right, so that that adjuster, you may think you're saving money because you're not going to pay that adjuster, but the fire claim adjuster is, is, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, is better than a uh, is better than a uh, a public adjuster. But having that adjuster, what would you rather have? Fifty thousand dollar payout and not pay somebody, or a hundred thousand dollar payout and pay that person ten thousand, so you get ninety k. So what do you rather have, 50K or 90K? That's the difference. All right? Now, I might have ranted on this and gone longer than I wanted to. There's so much more, and you might want to talk to people who are insurance adjusters and not just one person who went through this one time or knew somebody who was a friend. Talk to experts about it. I'm just trying to give you guys a TLDR of some of the most important things to know if in the event you are in a fire zone, and you're going to have to deal with these things. Some of what I said is wrong, depending on your insurance policy, depending on the state, depending on a lot of things. This is just general knowledge for you to have. I don't want anybody going through this and going, I'm doing that, 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 that. These are things for you to understand. These are things for you to know. Because this might save you a world of headaches. This might save you a, a lifetime of debt and problems and issues by understanding these things. Okay?